We welcome you into the first edition of the Frostburg State Coaches Show. I'm Dan Wallace, and we'll be talking to each of the active coaches once a week with exclusive interviews that you can only hear here. And we start this week with head volleyball coach Becky Fletcher. And I think you had a little bit of an idea. I was calling it the Coaches Show, but I think you had something a little bit better that we might start going with. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to be here on this week's Bobcast. The Bobcast. Yeah, All right, I think now there it is. Now it's stuck. Now we have to Done. call it the Bobcast. Definitely we don't have a choice. In. So welcome into the Bobcast, the first edition, season one, episode one of the Bobcats. Thanks for joining us, Becky. And we start with we'd start by talking about the the games that you had this week, four matches. Uh, this weekend up at St. Vincent's, you start off with a loss to St. Vincent's, a very close loss, a 3-2 to two loss, and then from there, you guys look to just tear it up against Pitt Greensburg, Westminster, and LaRoche. You have to be very happy with your opening weekend. Yeah, we were up 2-0 against St. Vincent, and it was kind of disappointing to come back and lose in five. Um, we tried to make some changes, and it just didn't work for us, but then after that match, we kind of decided that we weren't going to let that happen again, <laughs> and we are going to play a little bit harder, and I'm pretty excited with what I saw from my team this weekend. So three straight victories after that, and, and, and it looked like it was, for the most part in those three games, in dominant fashion. You know, um, two of them definitely were. The Westminster game was definitely a battle. We lost the first set, um, and I think we made some quick adjustments, and our girls adjusted to the speed of the game, and... They were just very feisty that game, and it was really a lot of fun to coach. Now let's talk about some of those girls. That y you have a very, a very big returning class this year, a and I think it all starts with, with Naya Cheatham, your outside hitter, who, who very well could be an all-conference player this year again. Then, then Lindsay Sapura as well, who's going to be your starting libero, who's coming back off of an injury. Who th it's, it's very good to see her out there on the court. And, of course, your starting setter, Maddie Torres, all three of them seniors this year and, and big-time leaders on this team. Yeah, so they bring this really great wealth of experience to our team. Um, they are fun. They bring this great energy. Um, but they also bring the other girls into our system. And so our sophomores have really stepped it up this weekend. And we had a few freshmen jump into the lineup. Um, but most importantly, the girls, they just meshed well. And I think that came from our senior experience. And then there were, you know, 11 girls in our lineups and sometimes 12 girls in a lineup, which is getting a lot of girls into one volleyball game. Yeah, and you have a lot of, uh, of supporting players as well when you look at it from Corey Smothers, Katie Lowe, Carly Grimes, Zoe Harris, Jessica Bugtong, uh, players that are going to see a lot of time. This looks like a very strong team for you this year. Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, it's really competitive in our gym, so it's nice to know that when we're competing in practice, we're really getting at ready to compete in matches, and there's not a lot of drop-off from whoever's starting one game. They might be starting the next game because they're working so hard in practice. Now let's talk about the two newcomers. You did only bring in two freshmen. I but did. But two freshmen that I think you think can have a big impact in this club going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they bring some size. They bring lots of spirited energy. They're um, both outside hitters for us. Uh, Gianna was able to step on the court a little bit this weekend and was fairly successful. Um, and I think that as she gets more comfortable with our setter and the speed of volleyball at the college level, she's going to really do well for us. Our recruiting base has gotten a lot stronger. So these girls are playing all over the country, um, playing in tournaments in high school in Vegas and Colorado and Florida and Atlanta. So it's really neat to see them come to this little small yeah. town in Western <laughs> Maryland and form their own little volleyball community and pretty be pretty happy about it. Now let's talk about the, the matches that you have coming up this week. As sure. you guys you guys have another invitational coming up this weekend. You head up to Rochester, mm -hmm. New York. The what five we were talking five hours or so up to Rochester, yeah. give or give or take up to northern New York and getting and our get first good bus ride in this year. And you get four very competitive matches again when you look at it from Rochester, Houghton Wells, Utica. Four teams that should pose a challenge for you guys right um so we're going up to rochester rochester our opening match there should be our toughest match they play in the uaa it's a pretty dominant conference conference in both sports and especially volleyball um they're a highly competitive program and i'm excited to go up there and see what my team learned last weekend and see if we can implement some new things for this coming weekend it should be a fun weekend for you should guys be. once again well thank you becky for joining us it's been great we'll talk to you again next week all right bye Stay tuned, folks. Coming up next, we'll talk to women's soccer head coach Brian Parker on the Bobcast. Stay tuned. 
We're now joined by women's head soccer coach Brian Parker. And Parker, you guys opened your season this year. A nice trip to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but a couple of tough results. But it, it's all in all, you go to Carnegie Mellon, you play a couple of very difficult teams. It still had to be a good weekend for the girls opening up. Well, obviously, we're going to challenge ourselves early in the season. Uh, I'm not sure playing a top 20 team on, on day one is uh, <laughs> the best advice, but you know, we proved that uh, we can compete with a team at that level. I mean, and, and how many teams in the country uh, went out on the first weekend and, and tested themselves at that level? I mean, uh, certainly some did, but, you know, we allowed a goal, obviously. Ch we're chasing the game a lot. They were very good, very athletic, but it took a fantastic goal to beat us, and frankly, I thought it was a pretty good result for us. I was, I was very, very, very proud of the kids. Well, when you have a lot of Maryland girls, too, a lot of them don't get the opportunity to go up north a lot, so it had to be a nice trip just for them to get to go and see the city and be that close. Pittsburgh was fun. You know, we got a chance to do some touristy things and went to, uh, up onto the incline and looked at the field and the city. The weather was good. Uh, I think it's always nice to explore the area when we do travel and, and going to the cities, uh, of course, is nice. But the bottom line was it was a business trip, and, mm -hmm. and we uh, we did a good job against CMU. Again, make them you know, at least made them really earn it and, and play at a high level to, to score. Um, I think we were – a little out of gas and, and tested in, in different ways in the second game. Obviously, we're playing lots of players and experimenting a bit with our lineup. And, um, you know, Wooster had some terrific athletes and, and scored a couple goals. I thought I thought we jumped on them early and, and also had the, had a lot of the game late as we were chasing the game. So I'm also pretty proud of how we, we kept our heads up and really put our foot on the gas at the end of the game and, and uh, tried to get back into it. Well, now this week you have a couple – Difficult contests coming up again. You have Washington and Jefferson coming here to Frostburg. You get to go to Bridgewater. What do you expect out of those two games? Well, our goal, if you look at our schedule, we try to play an above-average team, you know, a top half of their conference team in every conference we can sort of touch geographically. So WJ is, is a, always a contender in the, in the President's Conference and uh, is a you know, nearby opponent. They've got a great facility with the turf field. Coach is uh, a hardworking guy. So they're always a good test for us. I think we traded results the last couple of years, and they had a very good run last year. I think maybe finished second or third in their conference. So always a good test and, and very athletic team, organized team. You know, Bridgewater, uh, you know, we started playing them last year, another really solid ODAC team who's a, who's a contender in a very tough conference in, in Virginia. Um, another good coach, hardworking guy, see them all the time. We've, it's our first visit to the Bridgewater campus. Um, but they're going to be very tough. You know, we saw them. At Pittsburgh, they were the fourth team in the in the tournament at, at CMU. So, another really athletic team, uh, a team that's going to stretch us with a, a very athletic forward. Um, the Carrie Rager girl is, is going to be very good and very mobile and, and presents problems wherever she is. Um, tough, stout, defensive team. You know, hardworking kids in midfield. I think both those games are going to be games that um, where we you know we're going to compete. We're going to have the ball enough. We're going to have to really execute and, and perform well when we have it, but but also defend like mad, you know, and win lots of high balls and, and put tackles in. So, you know, two, two good tests for us, I think, and uh, it's nice to finally play at home, of course, on Wednesday. Now, we have to talk about this being early in the season, your returners, the newcomers, and I think it all really starts with what's been going on with that goalkeeper situation. Of course, Rihanna Lapin is not – it will not be able to play this season most likely, and – you have a couple newcomers coming in. Jenny Bullers, a freshman, and also Emily Faust that's coming in from York. I think everyone in, in any competitive sport at almost any level realizes that random things are going to happen, and you mm -hmm. just have to be prepared for the opportunities that present themselves when you're an athlete. And as a coach, you have to you know, uh, kind of prepare for the unexpected in a way or at least not, not be surprised when things happen. Losing a, a starting goalkeeper is certainly an issue, but uh, here comes Jenny and has great experience at the club and high school level. I think her high school team – um, you know, down in Stafford was in a, a state final, and so they played in the spring. She was playing in a state final in June, you know, just a couple of months ago. So she's got terrific experience, and she does have great hands and, um, you know, is, is a well-trained goalkeeper. I think our coaches are working very hard with her to, you know, isolate some weaknesses in her game and really get her lots of reps. And she had a terrific weekend. She played very well against CMU and, and uh, had put a good first half in uh, with Wooster. Emily Faust was a surprise transfer. Obviously, we need some depth at the position suddenly, and, and she played in the second half against Wooster and, and um, maybe the most college minutes she's had so far, and, and she did well too. Obviously, she's a little nervous and a, a little raw, um, but she's got some things we can improve on her, you know, in her game very quickly, and, and I think she'll be fine. Uh, you know, it, it's obviously not as settled as we would like it to be, but the girls who uh, are getting opportunities have, have responded very well. And now, of course, we have to talk about the returners because – 
you're a very upper classman led team. You returned a lot of starters from last year, not much turnover. That's got to be great for a head coach going into the season, knowing that you have a lot of players from last year who are in starting roles that you can rely on again. Well, every coach wants leadership, and they want role models. They want a good, positive voices in the team. Um, they want to be able to convey their message through a leadership group. And it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be seniors, but uh, in this case, we do have some experienced players who, who are filling our leadership roles wonderfully. Um, obviously, we have great depth at midfield, and, and Mel Bell is really a, a leader in terms of her presence and athleticism. The, you know, three of our four back line are, are seniors and uh, veterans, and we were able to kind of hit the ground running in terms of our defensive organization because of that, which has been great. Um, you know, they're all super fit, uh, super students off the field, um, really make good decisions with, you know, in terms of how they handle themselves. And so I think it is a big advantage. I think it, it makes a, some things a little bit easier for us, you know, obviously in terms of, you know, establishing the tone and setting standards and, and with the culture. Um, on, the, on the field, you know, we'll, when we're better and, and playing better, we're, we're going to get results. I mean, we have a tough schedule, and I think the girls – understand the, the the perspective of you know preparing early for the conference games later um and you know we'll see how we do but it's a delightful group for sure and uh you know they're they're just a pleasure to work with well thanks coach we appreciate your time we'll talk to you again next week thank you very much coming up next we'll talk to field hockey head coach caitlin borman stay tuned we're now joined by field hockey coach caitlin borman and caitlin it's got to be fun for you a fun experience coming in a new season First year on the job, what's it like for you to come in, take over this program, and where do you expect to take this program heading forward? Yeah, so it's been really exciting. The team has just been working super hard during preseason and um, the short amount of season that we've already had. And that's really what we want to build our program on is just that hard work ethic. We have a lot of great athletes in this program, so if we just continue to really, like I said, work hard we'll we'll get those wins eventually so yeah working hard has just really been the cornerstone that we're trying to build everything on right now now you have a lot of returners this year a lot of newcomers as well to the program and i think we need to start with talking about the the goalkeeper situation you lose a, a starter in jackie gover but from what i saw from game one nicole leedy she had herself a very good game and it looks like she might have a very good season going forward yeah leedy has really stepped up into that leadership position. Um, she made some fantastic saves against Dickinson. That's a really great attack that we just went against in Dickinson. So she really stepped up to the plate and came up with some key saves that we really needed from her. And also that back line is very experienced for you guys. Not to mention the attack though as well when you look at players like Holly Van Wee who you probably expect to lead that attack. You have a very veteran leading club here. Yeah, our defense is sup is very solid. Um, Kara Morell looks fantastic this year. Liz Davis has just been – she's one of our captains this year. She's just been a leader on and off the field. And, again, she's just really putting in that hard work that we're trying to build ourselves off of. Holly is making some great plays. She had some fantastic looks against Dickinson. So, yeah, we're really excited about these returners. Um, and – Ivy Meisner did a great job on the midfield as well. She's really leading a very young midfield group, so she's doing great as well. Now you have a lot of newcomers as well. What can you tell us about those newcomers, and what do you expect to see out of them? So something that I didn't really plan on doing but ended up happening was every freshman got playing time against Dickinson. So to me, that's fantastic. Again, I didn't mean to do it. They had just earned their way onto the field in that first game. So that's fantastic for the program that they're already getting these early minutes. Um, and Gabby Rehuba, she did has some great looks at the cage as well. Um, we got some good work in from Morgan Jones and Brooke Lafayette as well. They did some fantastic things out there. So Now let's talk about that first Dickinson game. It was a 4 nothing loss, but I think there's some things that you can really take away as positives from that first game. Yeah, so – one of the things that we weren't really too disappointed about that loss, again, Dickinson is a great team, especially their attack. Um, we really looked down, looked to shut down number 17, who had scored 19 goals last year, and she did not have any production, which was great from our defense. And um, something that really stats don't reflect is our great passing patterns that we had during that game. Again, our attack had some good looks, but – 
didn't quite reflect in the stats because maybe we, we would get it up into the circle, but we wouldn't get the shots off or we wouldn't earn the corners that we needed, but we're there and that's the first step and we're really excited about where we can go from there. Well, speaking about where you can go, you have a very big week coming up. Three games this week, Elizabethtown followed up by Randolph-Macon and then Ohio Wesleyan. What can you tell us about those opponents coming up this week and what do you hope to see out of your squad? Yeah, so Elizabethtown is a tough opponent. They just won the Landmark Conference. So we're really excited about um, going up against them. I think that is a better look for us than Dickinson was. Dickinson, again, was a very composed program. Elizabethtown is kind of similar to us in they're very athletic and just feisty. And so that should be a really a better look for us um, as well. Randolph-Macon is looking to rebuild themselves as well. They just brought in a huge freshman class. So that should be a good uh, matchup for us because we also have a very big freshman class. And then um, Ohio Wesleyan, again, a good program. So those are three really good games that are coming up that um, – We'll, we'll get to see a little more of what we're made of against them. Well, Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck to you this week, and we look forward to talking to you again next week. Thank you. Stay tuned, folks. Coming up next, we'll talk to men's soccer head coach Keith Burns. Stay tuned. We're joined now by men's head soccer coach Keith Burns. And, and Coach, you opened the season up this year with your tournament, as you, you usually do. You had a couple tough games against TC and J and Mount St. Joseph, but – I think there had to be, especially in that Mount St. Joseph game, some very positive things that you could take away, even though you were unable to find the back of the net. Yeah, I mean, we were we were happy with overall play, uh, the shape of the team, our possession, and a lot of the little things. But obviously, one of the most important things was lacking, and that was finishing. So um, chances were there, um, but some just some poor clinical efforts in front of the net uh, probably, you know, cost us a chance to win that game now this week coming up you have a couple very tough games coming up you have Johns Hopkins you went down to Johns Hopkins last year now then over the weekend you get Rutgers Camden you get Rowan as well as you travel out to New Jersey what do you expect to see out of those squads this week uh three really good teams um they're gonna test us to see where we stand and that's why they're on the schedule um they're a kind of a way to kind of just gauge where we're at and see where we need to go going forward as we get ready for conference play because if we can hang in there with them and win a game or two, then we'll be in pretty good shape. If we lose all three, um, then we know, okay, there's still some work to be done and we have to figure some things out, whether it's personnel, formation changes, whatever it may be. Obviously, um, you know, we're, we're a little bit younger than we would hope to be probably, but w the guys are coming along, but we still need to kind of test ourselves and that's what these teams are here for. And speaking of the guys, it's – tough to have to replace a couple of all-conference athletes when you look at Hassan Mustafa and goal Eric Castor line on that back line. L let's start with that goalkeeper position. You have four goalkeepers on that roster now, two freshmen, a, a returning senior uh, in, in Jackson Bicknell. Jackson got the start in both those games. I thought he looked very good in his two games in the tournament. What do you hope to see out of the four men that will be patrolling the net for you this year? Well, I mean, Jackson did play well, and he had a very good spring, and you know, we brought him in for a reason um, four years ago. The mm -hmm. only problem was he was stuck behind mm -hmm. Hassan. Um, so no matter how good he was, Hassan was always just a step ahead, which he was ahead of most goalkeepers. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was great that Jackson wanted to kind of give this another shot. Um, he's done fantastic by us and has worked to get back to where he's at, and I think he's just going to get better still as he gets more game minutes. Um, the two freshmen have come along great, Kyle and Juan. Um, you know, we kind of expect them to hopefully be the future, um, especially when Jackson leaves. And, you know, Ryan will be a junior or a rising junior, going to be a senior next year. And, you know, those three guys will hopefully be the ones that if there ever is an issue, you know, we don't have to worry about who's going to goal. We've got someone that can uh, get the job done for us. Um, and I, th I think the freshmen definitely have potential to grow as well. they got to learn the college game a little bit. And Ryan has done great with his – just work ethic and improving, you know, year to year um, as a transfer last year. I think he's, you know, we've kind of seen some good things out of him as well. Now that back line that you had last year was, it was very senior led. When you look at Caster line, you look at Chris Herbert this year, it's not a senior led line. 
your your main man. It's going to be his line. It's Brett Basham back there at the center back spot. But then you bring in a couple other guys that we saw this week in the starting rules. And in Mac Naughton, who was around last year, didn't see a lot of starts. Punya Salikwal, I I saw great things out of him as a young freshman. That back line still looks to be very strong. It's solid. Um, but like you said, it's young. So a starting freshman center back, starting left mm-hmm. back. And Mac on the other outside, who's – He's done well and, and probably would have got to play a little bit more last year except for an injury. Um, but Basham is, is the key. If he can keep those guys organized, keep them, you know, in good shape, talking to them, you know, then I, th- I think we can be solid. I don't know if we'll be as good as we were last year in the back. Obviously, experience goes a long way. Um, but, yeah, Punya is a – he's just going to get better and better. And, uh, you know, Jake's kind of forced mm-hmm. into that starting center back role. Um Due to an injury, you know, hopefully McCor Harris comes back, and then him and Jake can kind of compete for it. Um, but he's done well so far, and again, Bash was solid, and, and Mac is, yeah, I think he's always a good attacking threat out of the back. Um, he'd actually probably prefer to be a winger rather than an outside back, but you know, he's done the job we need for mm-hmm. him from him. Now let's move up to that midfield, and and you have three very key returners: Matt Morris, Rodrigo Valenzuela, Ernie Williams in that midfield that are really going to be pulling the strings this year. It looks like. I, I thought they were. You know, probably the three guys that were the most consistent and, you know, had very good games both days. I mean, Ernie's, like I've said before, is just our engine. He makes everything go with his work rate and his pressing and his ability to track people down. Um, and when he gets going forward, he's kind of hard to stop because he just seems almost faster with the ball sometimes. And Matt has come back with just a really good attitude of trying to be positive and trying to make things happen. And he, I, I th- thought he's been great on the ball and was deserving of his um, – you know, all tournament team selection. Um, you know, hopefully he can just start really s- unlocking some defenses uh, and setting up some of the guys with some assists. And Rodrigo is, is probably our best player I- at protecting that back line. Um, he knows the position. He knows where to be. Um, tactically, he's usually always in good shape. Um, and he's got the foot that can switch the point of attack. And he's just got a good soccer brain on him. Now, the last position to talk about, we got to talk about the, the attack. And you brought in some strong freshmen. You brought in some big freshmen, especially when you look at guys like Andre Lucanu. But it's got to be Josh McRoby's job to put the ball in the back of the net this year. Well, yeah, whoever whoever gets that number nine position is has got to be a goal scorer. Um, and right now, it's we're struggling to find it. So whether it's coming from him or all those wingers, I mean, those guys should be pumping in goals as well. Uh, and there's a bunch of them. Um, so right now, they're all kind of the same, and no one's separating themselves. So we're hoping somebody decides to step up. Uh, K.J. Davis coming back after a year off has looked strong, had great opportunities, but, you know, he didn't finish as well either. And then the young guys are still kind of learning the position and what we expect out of those winger roles. Um, I thought Mitchell was solid, but not, you know, not outstanding. Um, But, yeah, we rotated a lot of guys there just trying to see who can actually make an impact on the game and maybe find a way to get that that offense to finally, uh, you know, just fire on all cylinders. Well, thanks, Coach. We thank you for your time. We'll talk to you again next week. All right, thank you. Coming up next, we'll talk to head football coach Delane Fitzgerald. Stay tuned. We're joined now by head football coach Delane Fitzgerald. Coach, what a way to open the season. You get number 18 Stevenson coming in here on a Thursday night, fireworks night. What kind of fun was that down there on the sideline? First things first, you can ask me the question again in a second. You must be hard (laughs) up for people to interview this week. Why? Wanting, to, wanting to talk to me in the middle of the week. Um, anyway, you, you, <laughs> must be, you must be looking for something to do. <laughs> I, I appreciate the fact you're looking for work. <laughs> now, what was the first question? How, how much fun was that Thursday night to get a big win over number 18 ranked Stevens in a 33-7 final? Fireworks night. The stands are packed. It looked like it was a hell of a lot of fun. I- exciting night. Uh, th- our coaching staff and our players always enjoy the night games, and we seem to play really well at night. So, you know, we'll play as many night games as people will allow us to play. Um, but but it was exciting. You're right, the fireworks display was nice, and the fact that we won and beat a ranked opponent was nice too. Um, impressed with the way the young men and the coaching staff got themselves ready to play and ready to go on Thursday night. It was a great night. What did you like that you saw out of your team? I mean, the, the defense especially – just as stout as it was last year, what would, what did you see that was good out of your squad this week? Yeah, we, we had some mental breakdowns early on in the first quarter from our defense, and then we seemed to get it together the last three quarters and played really, really well. Here is what happened on, on, on Thursday night in a nutshell is Stevenson beat themselves in the first half, penalties and turnovers and snapping the ball over the quarterback's head and snapping the ball over the punter's head. Th- those things would get you beat all day, every day. 
But then um, they went in at halftime and cleaned some things up as a coaching staff, as they should have, and then came out in the second half. And Stevenson didn't make any mistakes, and we just continued to beat on them. And what ends up happening over a two-and-a-half, three-hour college football game is they were unable to match our focus and intensity for two-and-a-half, two hours and 35 minutes, however long the game lasts. Um, our, our guys stayed focused. They stayed intense in the speed of our play. The way we run to the football on offense and defense, they were unable to match that. Now let's talk about the rankings a little bit. The new rankings come out. You guys sit at number 11 in the country now. There was a lot of top 25 teams this week that went down in week one. I think it was seven top 25 teams lost. You get that big jump. It's got to be exciting to be all the way up to number 11, but obviously the job's not done. No, it, being so – being number 27, being number 17, being number 11 right now in the second week of the season, none of them make any difference. What we have to do is focus on next week's opponent. We, we've got to get we, – we, we're already moved on to college in New Jersey, and we need to be focused on college in New Jersey and the task at hand. Dan, the way this thing works out in college football, and especially in NCAA Division Three football, we, we're guaranteed 10 games. So you break them down, they all, they all account for 10% of your season. We won last week's 10%. We got to win this week's 10% and then move on to the following week. Um, I don't get caught up in the rankings. I'm never going to get caught up in the rankings. Yet, Yes, is it nice and exciting for the alumni and the fans and the student body and maybe the young men on our team. I hope they don't get wrapped up in it, but maybe they do. But we need to focus on blocking and tackling and ball security and running to the football this week and not on where we're ranked at in the country. There's only one poll that matters, Dan, and that's the one that comes out at the end of the year. Now let's talk about the guys that have come back and, and the newcomers as well. We start on the offensive side of the football. Of course, it's nice to have your starting quarterback back. It's nice to have your leading receiver back. You still get Jamal Morant, and you add two other great tailbacks into that equation. The offensive line's still intact. It looks like your newcomer or your returners are going to play a big part in this season. Yeah, we're, we're, we're upper class led. A um, lot, lot of juniors, a lot of seniors, and we're happy with that. And that was the plan when we took the job four years ago. Is that our first recruiting class are now seniors, and we planned on being really good when when they got there, and then adding classes behind them as good or better than them. And we think we've accomplished that. Um, you, you talked about the run game. Yeah, Jamal Morant's back from last year, and, and he is a really good player. We add Grayson Boyce to that transfer from Towson, and, and, and Grayson Grayson's a large mammal now. He, he's six one plus. 240 plus he you know he runs with authority does a nice job for us and we're happy to have him and, and then the the one you know when, when, when he can keep it together and do the right things on and off the field you know get gavin lavitt's the player now um um his vision and explosiveness and athleticism are just a little bit different than than, than other guys in this conference and in the country um does some really really good things um but we, yeah we're happy with those three happy to have our quarterback back you know we're happy to have our entire offensive line back return 10 starters uh, from last year and then the, the starter that we lost you know we replaced him with some good players and we're happy about that now on the defensive side of the football a lot of guys back as well and I think it all starts with Niall Scott you go to Jordan Proctor Vinny Persichetti Josh Scales Josh Washington wherever you want to look most of this defense is back you only lost a couple guys and it looks like it's going to be a top 10 defense in the country again. We returned seven starters off the defense from last year, and, of course, we lost four good players and, and young men that we'd like to have back now. But the, the, the backups from last year that have stepped into them spot, those spots have done a really, really good job. And you're, you're right, Niles is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, I spend a few minutes every day talking with NFL scouts about him, and, and he, he's got a chance you know, you know, to earn himself some money next year playing football, and that's a very, very good thing. Um, J Jordan Proctor has played with a chip on his shoulder and, and played with excitement and energy since he arrived here in 2014. Does a great job for us at the defensive end position. Pockham Tog is finally coming into his own, you know, at the other defensive end position after being a backup for three years. You know, he's getting playing time and playing well. And then we've got those three sophomores that rotate in at nose guard. You know, at Jace Denham, Walter Riley, and John Millstreet all rotating in at the nose guard position and all three doing a good job. Um, but we expect improvement from those three young guys, you know, as the season goes on. At the linebacker position, you know, we, we returned – um, Graylin Walker and Monty Jones from last year, and they rotated to Will Backer and, excuse me, at the Sam Backer and do a nice job there. We've got a rotation of Matt Meyer and um, Sean Maginson at the Mike linebacker position, and they play with enthusiasm and do a nice job. And then Aaron Gibson and Graham Brochard play that 
Will Backer for us. Both of them seniors. Both of them been in our program for three years. They understand the defense, and they play really, really hard, and we're, we're, we're happy to have them. And then you talked about the four DBs. You know, we returned all four DBs from last year. We lost Matt Capoza to graduation, and we miss him. Um, but we returned the other four. They do a nice job. You know, Vinny Persichetti, Josh Washington, Dante Chinnery, and then um, Josh Gales all do a nice job at that DB position. Um, after starting at Glenville State last year, Nick Lopez has transferred in here for his senior season, and he's rotating in at the safety spot, our second leading tackler from Thursday night, and Nick's doing a nice job for us. Last order of business, Coach. This week you get TCNJ, the College of New Jersey. Opening week for your play for the NJAC, your first NJAC opponent, week two of the season. What do you expect to see out of the Lions? Yeah, the brand-new coach, coaching staff. So Casey Goff takes that job two months ago, a little late in the game because he missed spring football, but he's in there. Um, that they, they had they had some good freshmen to report to camp that they didn't have last year. The, the, their upper class led to I, – I, I, we had this talk in the staff meeting on Friday morning, you know, right after the game. I don't know how TCNJ does it, but they line up every year with two, three, four senior wide receivers. They just seem to replace senior wide receivers with senior wide receivers. But but they've got 11 out of their 22 starters or seniors. They're going to play really, really hard for the new head coach, Dan. The way it works is you switch head coaches. And whether you're good or not, the, the following season, at least early on in the season, they play really, really hard for the next guy. We expect them to come in and play hard. Um, you got a tailback that, that is serviceable and can win football games. Got an offensive line that can win football games. And they've got a senior quarterback that can help them win football games. They turn around on the defensive side of the ball and got a couple upperclassmen at D-line. They have a linebacker, number 42, Max Bushka. I think I'm pronouncing it right, Max Bushka. Um, does a nice job for them as a junior. He's done a nice job for them the last two years playing the linebacker position. And then his name slips my mind right now, but number three, their safety is a good football player for them. Um, and then, then you always have a chance to keep a game close or win a football game when you have the best punter in the conference. Um, TCNJ has the best punter in the conference. He was the best punter last year as a freshman. He's still the best punter as a sophomore, does a nice job. And, again, I don't remember the young man's name, but he's a good football player. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. We look forward to talking to you again next week. Thank you, Dan. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll talk to head cross-country coach Dale Louie. We'll be back. Stay tuned. We're joined now by head cross-country coach Dale Louie. And, and Coach, you, you start the season out in maybe what might be one of your tougher meets to start the year. You go up to Shippensburg, and, and I think that the guys and the girls both, the, there were some solid results when you look at the overall table. Uh, yeah, Dan, they're certainly uh, uh, one of our tougher meets. You're right about that. Uh, not a large meet, but uh, most of the teams there, uh, well, all the teams there that uh, finished ahead of us are either regionally or nationally ranked in Division Three or Division Two. So uh, it, it's a good meet to start out with. Uh, it's a little under distance uh, from championship distance. Uh, so we kind of like that early in the season. Uh, and... Uh, it's, it obviously serves as a good measuring stick for what we need to do to get better. Well, let's talk now about some of the returners and some of the newcomers for both the men and the women. We start with, with the men's roster, and, and I think the returners, it starts with Robert Romano and goes from there. Uh, yeah, R Robbie's uh, since he's stepped on this campus, uh, has been certainly one of the better cross-country runners we've had. Uh, he's now a junior, uh, running well. Uh, he looks very healthy, very strong. Uh, Actually, a little surprised he didn't run a little bit faster there uh, at, at the <laughs> meet. I, I think he uh, thought that as well, too. I think it was a matter of getting caught up in some traffic there and, and then trying to work his way out of that. So something, you know, hopefully that he learned from, from that there. Uh, Timmy Wolotkin and uh, uh, Jake Rickards have, have really uh, stepped it up in practice uh, from where they were at last year. And uh, that's carried through into the meets. Uh, we uh, we have some newcomers uh, on, on that men's side there that uh, I, I think uh, are, are going to help us out tremendously. We actually don't have any seniors on either one of our teams, uh, which is uh, something that just dawned on me about two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, you know, so we're, we're looking for some leadership there uh, on that side. But uh, of the newcomers, uh, uh, Tanner Jacobs has, has looked very, very good, and uh, we have uh, – Braxton Clark, 
uh, who, uh, you know, I would say almost every practice he goes out there and he looks better than a practice before. Uh, so those are two guys that are, you know, immediately going to help us. Uh, I really do think we've got somewhere between 10, 11 guys that are going to be taking a crack at that top seven. And when you look at the girls' side of the team, I think you have some strong runners there too, and I, and I think it starts there with Michaela Garrison and girls like Samantha Gatier and, and just and trickles down from there. And again, a lot of newcomers that that I'm, I'm sure you expect a lot of big things out of. Yeah, uh, I, I really felt like the women ran uh, better at ship than than the men did, and, and I've I've let them know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, because uh, all the all the women, with one exception, a young lady who who wasn't feeling well, uh, all. Uh, improved upon their times uh, either from last year or in some cases for the last three years uh, so that's a big plus and and we've got some some new people who've come in there to, to help us out uh, uh, Natalie uh, Gray's is from uh, a, a local runner from from Allegheny High School uh, she's come in and, and she stepped right in with Sarah McCurry and and Michaela uh, in, in our top three uh, and those three are going to be really something of a key for us because uh, we lost two pretty decent runners uh, the way cross-country scoring works. Uh, we need those three to push up as high as they can at invitationals. Uh, we're looking a lot better on the rest of the team in terms of depth on the women's side. Uh, this, is, this is probably uh, from the back forward, you know, one of the stronger women's teams we, we've had. Now let's talk about the, the upcoming meet this week. This week you head to, to Westmoreland County Community College for their Invitational. What can you tell us about that meet, and what do you expect to see out of your runners on both the men's and the women's side? Well, it, it, it's a, a meet really uh, every year that's uh, kind of a roll of the dice in terms of the competition <laughs> because the, who shows up there changes a little bit. Uh, there are often some schools there that we, we don't see other than, than at that meet. We also see probably a, a little bit larger number of uh, JUCOs there. Uh, but overall, uh, it's, it's a great meet because, uh, again, it's a little short uh, early in the season. Both men and women run 5K. Uh, and uh, I, I really think that everybody always, from top to bottom on our roster, everybody has somebody there to compete against at that meet. Uh, the course is uh, not a real fast course. But it's, it's not a killer course. It's, it's a very, very fair cross-country course, and I like that because then, uh, you know, we can really compare some times. Well, thanks, Coach. We thank you for your time. We look forward to talking to you again next week. All right, Dan. Thank you very much. Thanks to those of you for listening out there, and we hope you join us again next week. We'll be up again next week with the Coaches Show. It'll be coming to you every week uh, with interviews from all of the active coaches who are in season right now. So we'll be continuing to do this once a week and you can look forward to hearing this about every Tuesday afternoon as it'll be up on the website ready to go for you to listen to and until then I'm Dan Wallace saying so long good afternoon to you we'll talk to you again next week bye-bye